All right, salvation is by faith alone. Okay, but faith in what? Very good question. Most people have their own idea of what the content of what you must believe must be done, must be uh, uh, commensurate with what you actually believe. What are the details of exactly what is the content of your belief in order to have eternal life? If it's one thing and you can't have something else, or if it's another thing or it's up to you, well, we've looked at a couple of these. Here's a third one. The content of what one must do for salvation unto eternal life does not require a knowledge or of or belief in non-essential for salvation unto eternal life doctrines of the faith. Well, that's a mouthful. That's why I put it dashes in between. Non-essential for salvation unto eternal life doctrines of the faith, such as what? The deity of Christ. Oh, now you're objecting. Well, was Abraham told he had to believe that Jesus Christ was going to be God? It's not in Scripture. The Trinity, same thing. Unlimited atonement, same thing. Those weren't stipulated as things that Abraham had to believe in. And isn't Abraham the specific example of what he believed would gain also salvation for me and you in this age? Unlimited atonement, unconditional election, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and a number of things. Oh, 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 don't turn it off yet. On the other hand, certain non-essential to salvation beliefs which are excluded from the required saving content, such as the deity of Christ, his resurrection. If you deny these things, never believe these things, the Trinity, one God, or that no kind of faithfulness is required in order to be or stay saved, etc., must not be disbelieved at the time that saving faith is expressed, which disbelief would negate being saved at all at the time that you believe. If the content was contaminated with something that would negate your salvation, if Jesus Christ was not God, he couldn't do what he did on the cross. If Jesus Christ was not man, he couldn't do what he did on the cross. Albeit a born-again believer might later fall into such apostasy, yet still remain saved. Wow. Lots of arguments. Just go to a passage. If a passage in the scripture provides the content of saving faith, carefully discerned, and there's another passage in scripture has a different kind of content of saving faith, we're in trouble, aren't we? Here's the point. To believe unto eternal life that God has made provision for one's sins through his one and only Son includes, implies, believing in Jesus Christ's sacrifice, propitiation, provision for one's sins. It can be called a sacrifice. It could also be called a propitiation. There isn't any real difference. More detail here or there. Provision for one's sins. That he, Jesus Christ, indeed, has the capacity and willingness to make that provision. Hence, it can only be true that he is therefore God. Whether or not one knows, believes in this, even at the time when it expresses saving faith. The successful outcome of salvation unto eternal life, however, is not dependent upon knowing slash believing in any non-essential, I say non-essential, to salvation unto eternal life doctrines. The essential content of what one must believe in order to have eternal life is present in every single salvation unto eternal life passage without the need to add or take away anything in that passage or master all the passages and you only master 85 out of the 88, you die and go to hell. This, I hear this all the time for all these churches. If you don't believe Jesus... Uh, uh, was uh, Lord and Savior at that time. You know, um, 
if you didn't believe his Lord, well, maybe later on you'll believe his Lord, but the moment that you uh, uh, save, when I got John 3.16, it just say, whoever believes that he gave his one only son for your sins, died for your sins. What does the Son of God, his one only son, mean? See? Note that passages that do not indicate that eternal life is in view, omit such words as have eternal life, omit justified in the sense of to be credited with the righteousness of God of Jesus Christ, omit words to the effect of receiving everlasting residence in the eternal kingdom of God, omit, say, when the context indicates a one-time reception of eternal life, as opposed to harvesting a more abundant life by works in order to have an eternally receive, already received one-time reception of eternal residence, residence in or life in the eternal kingdom of God. And furthermore, as opposed to the preservation of the value or life of one's temporal life, salvation has a number of meanings. Which one is it? It has to be implied or stipulated clearly that eternal life residence, not an enhancement of your eternal life, Etc. This all it all depends upon three things: context, context, and context. Nevertheless, many of scriptures, not essential to but interdependent with being saved unto eternal life doctrines, are irretrievably, inseparably related to the essential to salvation doctrines in the sense that they all have to be true for any of them to be true. So if you don't believe in some of them at the point of eternal life, you don't believe in the deity of Jesus Christ or that he was human also. Although one does not have to know of slash or believe in these non-essential to but interdependent with salvation and to eternal life doctrines along with those essential doctrines that give one eternal life at the time they believe and were saved unto eternal life. Nevertheless, at the moment when one does become saved unto eternal life, one cannot be denying the truth of any uh, of non-essential to but interdependent with being saved unto eternal life doctrines. This sounds confusing, but if you read your Bible properly, you'll draw the same conclusion. You can't expect Abraham, for example, to know the Greek name of Jesus Christ, nor are we saved, or that he was the Son of God, and the Son of Man at the same time. Those things were stipulated later. But the capacity to provide for, make provision for a descendant of Abraham. First century. Right? The descendant of Abraham had the capacity being God and man to make provision for the sins of Abraham. Well, then there is no salvation until eternal life received at all if you deny these essential interconnected things. If you don't believe the, the Bible is the word of God, say, well, I know what it says. I just don't believe it. Then you didn't believe it. You don't have eternal life. For one, for given the time one needs to spend properly studying and learning scripture, one might not yet have a knowledge of or belief in a number of non-essential to but interdependent with being saved unto eternal life doctrines up to the time one was saved unto eternal life or even thereafter. Most Christians are not good students of Scripture. But the content of the original belief, which results in eternal life, cannot include disbelief in any of the non-essential to but interdependent with being saved unto eternal life doctrines such as belief that Jesus was only human. If you don't accept him as deity, you don't get saved. Or less than God, i.e. a God, Jehovah Witnesses, and you don't have it. Now, I've talked to Jehovah Witnesses as of lately, a number of times. And we agree on all these things, except he's still a God. Well, they're not saved yet. I get him, I can get him one step at a time. Or that there is more than one God. Or that the Trinity is a false doctrine. Or that Jesus was never raised from the dead. A lot of people believe that, or a belief that something else besides a moment of faith alone in Christ alone for forgiveness of sins needs to be done, such as to repent of all of one's sins. Well, if you do that, you don't get saved. 
or to persevere in good works. If you think that and believe that at the time of your salvation, you didn't get saved. Or to demonstrate one's faith via some kind of human doing. If you did that while you, do, you think you got saved, you didn't get saved. For to insist on human doing in any way, shape, or form. Or to believe in a human being or a created God to provide eternal life through a self-sacrifice for the sins of the whole world would not provide eternal life at all. It's got a flaw in it, in the context. And it's not that, it's not rocket science. Just take John 3.16 and investigate it thoroughly. You're done. Acts 16, 30, 31. You're done. You have to do a little investigation. On the, on the other hand, if one who has expressed faith in the essential doctrines of the faith in order to have eternal life without denying any doctrine that would negate receiving eternal life at that moment of faith alone, and thereafter denies any of the doctrines of the faith, especially those essential to salvation and to eternal life, one nevertheless remains saved, albeit an apostate, until one repents from such apostasy. There you need to repent. Now you have eternal life, but you remain saved. But you have to repent from such apostasy because you may die an early physical death. And you may be sorely disappointed to the point of weeping and gnashing your teeth in the eternal kingdom of God when you realize what could have been had you not apostatized. You'd be under God's discipline, which might result in an early physical death, like I said, and or a great loss of eternal rewards, like I said, for the rest of eternity, but never loss of eternal life. Relative to the essential to the reception of eternal life doctrines of Scripture, an individual needs to properly respond to, in order to have eternal life, logic demands that the least common denominator of stipulations which complete salvation unto eternal life passages contain in order to have eternal life is wholly sufficient in order to have, receive eternal life. In order to determine what the least common denominator of those stipulations are, one must review clear salvation passages and then compare them to the more difficult passages to arrive at those stipulations which are common to all of them. Nothing else in any salvation unto eternal life passage or any passage in Scripture needs to be responded to by faith in order to have eternal life. On the other hand, not essential to, but interdependent with being saved unto eternal life doctrines may not be denied, disbelieved at the point, at the point, at the point of exercising faith in Christ for salvation unto eternal life. Otherwise, salvation is not received at that point at all. So all such complete salvation passages, those that declare one to have eternal life once one is, what is stipulated within them is obeyed in the sense of believed in, all have in common a moment of faith alone in a provision made for forgiveness payment for one's own sins, resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ or an equivalent name or person for him, which implies a residence in the eternal kingdom of God in heaven. This is the least common denominator of passages which provides directions for one to follow in order to have eternal life, in the sense of expressing a moment of faith alone in those essential doctrines. So other stipulations which are in view, in addition to the least common denominator of stipulations for eternal life, in any salvation passage or in any other passage which are not essential for eternal life when accepted by a moment of faith alone, do not serve to provide eternal life, but they certainly are valuable when obeyed, in the sense of for the personal growth and understanding of the born-again believer for blessing and eternal rewards. Upon careful examination, in accordance with the normative rules of language, context, and logic, certain stipulations in complete salvation passages often say precisely the same thing, in other words, as our stipulations in other complete salvation passages do, which are thus essential and part of the least common denominator, wholly sufficient for one to respond to by a moment of faith alone unto eternal life. We'll give you some examples next time.